During the last two weeks, basically, the international break, I've tried to steer clear of David Moyes as a subject in terms of his job being under threat. I sort of tried to avoid, I guess, two weeks of doom and gloom with it, really. I think it's probably counterproductive. It's probably quite tapping content. It's easy to do that stuff, but I think you can only, you know, say something so many times. And look, we're all West Ham fans. We know, we know where we are. We're in the bottom three. We, we understand that David Moyes and the team are not doing particularly well this season, particularly when, uh, when you measure it up against how we've done in the past couple of seasons. That being said... I think there comes a point where I've almost been ignoring it for two weeks. And it's sort of like the elephant in the room. It's sort of like, if you don't, if you don't look, it's not really there. Well, it is there. And, and certainly, I know you'll have done the same. Every time I glance at the Premier League during the last couple of weeks, well, oh, it just doesn't look good. Anyway, the reason I'm discussing it today is because there's been an article from Matt Law in The Telegraph about Moyes' position. It, it's sort. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cut to the chase now. It sort of hints he's got five games left. Now, I would normally discount this type of thing. You know, if you watch his channel regularly, I'll often look at different websites, different newspapers. I'll look at stories, and I'll, I'll openly tell you, I don't believe that that we can discount that. However, this is Matt Law, and Matt Law. I'll, I'll bring the article up now. We'll, we'll have a look at it in a second. Matt Law has contacts, and I, I, well, I don't mean like contact lenses, I mean he, he's, he's connected, he's got contacts at West Ham, uh, certainly with the ownership, uh, certainly with, um, I know, with Declan and his team, so I think it's worth paying attention to this, and some of the wording in it is very, very interesting, he's been very specific with some of his wording, and it's just not stuff you'd, you'd make up if you were going to write a generic article about West Ham being in trouble and, and Moise's job being under threat. It's a little bit too much detail in there, um, which makes it a good article, but it don't make it particularly good uh, reading if you're a West Ham fan, or particularly if you're David Moyes. Um, just before I, I go into the article itself, I just want to go back to the Everton game, if I may, because I felt in the Everton game that... We didn't approach it like it was a six-pointer. Now, I don't want to accuse the players of not, not taking it seriously, but you probably all know the stats by now. The stats are down. Our running with a 19th best, yeah, 19th best team in the... We're basically almost the worst team in the Premier League at running. We're not running as far as we were. Dribbles completed, passes completed, all that stuff. We're actually punching above our weight. We're 19th for a lot of the stuff. Um, we're actually 18th in the league, of course. Um, so I, I think there's, there's a, you can look at it statistically. It's not just the points on the board and the goals scored. Actually, it looks like effort is down. I don't want to accuse the players of not taking it seriously. However, I do think going into that Everton game, it is one that was, I would class as a six-pointer. Now, they don't get called six-pointers at the start of the season, do they? But I think it was the reasons not you string three wins together, you move up the league quite quickly. Uh, and, and I get that. But they were they were right next to us, Everton. I think, you know, they'd had four points. We had four points at the time. They had a manager who was under a bit of scrutiny. So did we. Uh, I, I, it was a good time to beat them. You have to beat the teams around you. Basically, whether you think it was a six-pointer or you don't, they were our rivals. That, just as Wolves are for the upcoming game. Last season, remember I said about why would, why would Man United let Jesse Lingard go in January? I said they were our rivals. Unfortunately, Man United are not our rivals anymore. Nottingham Forest are our rivals. Wolves are our rivals. Um, Everton, well, Everton were last week. Now they, they're, you know, four or five places above us in the league. OK, so I don't think we went in there and said, look, let's, let's turn Goodison Park into a nasty place to be. Let's make the crowd nervous. Let's get the crowd on Frank Lampard's back. Let's, let's make them fear for their safety. Let's turn Goodison Park quiet. I don't think, feel that we did that. Make no mistake about it. That's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, that's going to be the instruction that Wolves get. Make the London Stadium quiet. Make it a nervous place. Put the pressure on them. The fans are nervous. Basically, in short, I think the Wolves will treat it as a six-pointer. I don't think we did. I think Wolves will look at us and think, well, hold on, we're in 17th, West Ham are in 18th. We're going to, um, this is a very, very important game. And, uh, and so for that reason, I, th I think this Wolves game is massively important. And this ties in to the article that Matt Law has written. Now, it basically the article says David Moyes risks fight for his job if West Ham results don't improve. No big surprise there. Uh, it, it says David Moyes is under pressure to turn, to turn things around at West Ham quickly. OK, following their poor start to the season and avoid a fight to save his job. 
Okay, well, that's quickly. And the reason I point out quickly is that that's going to resurface here. I probably should point out that this article is in stark contrast to maybe the leaks that have come out from the club. The club have made no official statement, but through their chosen channels, through their chosen newspapers, their chosen websites, they have let it be known that David Moyes' job is safe, not just in the short term, but in the long term. The messaging was very clear. It's so clear, it's consistent. You know the messages come from the same place. When the same words pop up at the same time on different websites and different newspapers, you know everyone's been briefed by the same thing. And the messaging was clear from the board. West Ham are in a position whereby we're at the bottom of the league and there's no one better to get us out of that than David Moyes. David Moyes has proven it in the past. He'll prove it again. His job is safe. That's the messaging. And, and, and they put that they put that out there, and I absolutely get that. And he's he he saved us from relegation twice in that sense. I guess he is the best guy for the job. But that's the messaging you're getting. This is slightly different, OK? And the reason this is interesting is because once we finish reading this, I think you'll probably agree that this is a journalist that's been briefed here. So anyway, so uh, it says, Moyes has done an outstanding job since returning. That's all, that's all the... That's all the platitudes, basically. He's led us into Europe, blah, blah, blah. He goes on and he says a load of nice stuff about David Moyes. However, next paragraph, this campaign has not started well, with West Ham collecting just four points and one victory from their opening seven games. Sounds bad, actually, doesn't it? We know it because we've read the league table, but when you actually say it out loud, it sounds bad. Uh, which has left the club in the bottom three of the Premier League. There is not currently any sense of panic at West Ham. OK, well, first of all, I mean, I love tearing senses to bits. There is not currently. So no panic currently, which obviously suggests there might be panic in the future. Nothing big there. There's, why, why does he know this? Why does he know there's no panic at West Ham? Well, because he's probably been briefed uh, again, as it were. It says, but Moyes needs to inspire a fast upturn in form. Well, there we go again, because he started off with quickly. Moyes has to act quickly to save his job. And now it's saying here a fast upturn in form and results starting at home against Wolverhampton Wanderers on Saturday. It's, it's, such a, it's such a key game. It goes on to say that Wolves are two points better off than West Ham and sources believe that the Wolves fixture, along with the following four Premier League games, could be vital to Moyes' long-term security. That is a brief. I'm, I'm telling you. West Sources. He's saying West Ham sources the following four league games and the Wolves game. OK, what is that? It's Wolves, it's Fulham, it's Southampton, it's Liverpool, it's Bournemouth. And it goes on to say, Moyes will have, a difficult, will have difficult questions to answer if his team cannot move up the table after those games. Um, we'll get back to that in a second because that's, that's the running. We'll get back to that running. Now, here's the other thing. And when you start to understand that this is someone that's been briefed, it then goes on to say West Ham are the third highest spenders. There's the reminder. So basically, you better upturn the form quickly. We've spent loads of money. Third highest spenders this summer, uh, which has put pressure on Moyes to at least very maintain and to, to very much maintain at least another challenge to qualify for Europe. Oh, um, it says there's been a sense of frustration at the club. Um, that £30 million striker Gianluca Scamacca, who performed well against England for Italy last week, has only started one Premier League game, having scored three times in the Europa Conference League. There's a sense of frustration within the club. You've got to know, you've got to know that. Someone's told him that. Someone's told him all this stuff. And when you start looking at then so basically what you're seeing is now there's an element of um, there's an element of concern, uh, which is probably slightly different to what we were hearing after the Everton game. What's happened between now and the Everton game? I'll tell you what, time. That's all that's happened. Nothing else has happened apart from time. It's time for the people at the club where they've had a little reflect, they've had a little sit down and think, this ain't so good. What is the plan? So I think we're moving away from Moyes' job is secure, whatever happens, we have faith in Moyes. This looks like Moyes has five games left. We'll get back to those games in a minute. It says West Ham also broke their club records uh, to sign Brazilian midfielder Lucas Paqueta for £51 million from Lyon. That move was designed to help the club move up to the next level. Again, so it's the reminder. So first of all, it says Europe. Then it's like next level. Um, it, it, and then it goes on. There's, there's another platitude at the end. Moyes returns to the club in December 2019. Um, we're a, just a point above relegation zone. Um, he had an 18-month contract since then. He steered, steered the club to Europe twice and signed a new deal that runs to 2024. 
I guess a lot of reminders, a lot of prompts. It's quickly, there's the reminder of Skamaka, frustration, Skamaka's not in the team, a reminder that we signed Lucas Paqueta. Um, but, but the turnaround being fast, right? Let's just get to these games. Wolves, Fulham, Southampton, Liverpool, and Bournemouth. I, I, th I think David Moyes, and what we probably need as a club, David Moyes is going to need to win. He's going to need more than nine points from that little lot. Because... I mean, you know, if, if you had if you had that, you are you're a long way into the season. You can't be a long way into the season, basically, and have 13 points. But if we got nine points, we'd have, we'd have 13 points from that, and we'd have you know basically have just marginally more. We'd have one more point than games played. That's not really going to cut it. You'd still look, we'd still be down the bottom. That that's that's what I'm saying. Would we be in 18th? I don't know. We'd be in and around the bottom of the league. Uh, so that's why Wolves is just so important, because I think you can look at the five games, but it's the pressure that Wolves puts on. Beat Wolves, then you have to think, well, hold on, we might, we might then probably go on and beat Fulham. We should beat Fulham, but he's not mucking around. Uh, Silva at Fulham, he, he, he seems to know how to set up a team. Um, Southampton, well, Southampton could look like the best or worst team on their day, it's hard to see Liverpool. All right, Liverpool having a, a tricky time, but let's be perfectly honest here. You don't want to play them. They've still got absolute quality players there. Um, and then Bournemouth, obviously, the other one, it's, it's the, the, the games look winnable. Not all of them, but the games look winnable. You could look at that and think, well, hold on a second. We, we, we could beat... If we could beat Fulham, we could beat Southampton, we could beat Bournemouth, if we could beat Wolves. I mean, he's laughing. If, if he wins four of those five games, you know, he's laughing. He wouldn't even have to worry about it. And I wouldn't even be concerned either, to be fair. But even if you get 10 points out of there, it sort of starts to look uh, a little bit better, really, doesn't it? Uh, but the first one is, is the key. But I just think it was really interesting, really interesting to look at all of that there and look what he said. Um about it being quickly, and there is there is a man under pressure, and I just feel that the messaging has changed slightly. Now you can either believe or disbelieve that, but to, I guess to disbelieve it, you've got to believe that Matt Law's not been briefed and he has no contacts within the club, and that's just not true. That's just not true. This is not a made. This is not like a you know ninety minutes. It's not ninety minutes. That's actually quite a good website, but it's it's not tribal football or or a number of these websites that pop up where. It's it's a journalist you've never heard of who's writing about the club. This is somebody with links to the club, writing about the club, with contacts inside the club, making very, very particular things about the turnaround needing to be fast, about how much money we've spent, about how Europe is expected. Uh, this is really interesting. This is this is really, really interesting. This, as I say, um, I just thought it would be odd. Don't shoot the messenger. Um, not my article. <laughs> I've tried not to discuss David Moyes at all in his transfer window, which is why we've done a load of silly old rubbish. And you saw, um, uh, you basically saw a thumbnail of me um, in the bath with Slaven Bilic watching. Naughty Bilic. Was it funny, actually? I did that video and then Bilic goes and uh, signs for West Brom later. It was nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with the uh, the bath with Bilic and all the rest of it. He obviously heard my contract terms. Thought, I've had enough. I'm going to sign for West Brom. Anyway, there you go. Just thought I would share that article with you. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll link the article underneath um, in, in the comments so you can have uh, a little look yourself. Uh, just before I go, because I've not done it, there's, there's been no spitch, there's been no one foot, there's been no nothing like that. Um, would you go and check out our shop, please? Hammerschatstore.com. Go and have a look. There's loads and loads of really good stuff in there. T-shirts, mugs. Uh, we've even got a Christmas jumper. Um, it's early. I shouldn't have said the C words. Go and please just go and check it. You don't even have to go and buy anything. Just please go and check out the store. Go and have a look. Of course, um, if you buy anything, just remember if you're a patron, um, you get quite big percentages off. So just go and check the patron code um, on our patron page before. Right, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.